Yeah, hello and welcome to this tutorial for MamaWorld.com. I'm Matthias and I want to show you here how we created uh, or how we rigged and animated this animation here with the help of pins and boxes in After Effects. And I thought this is also a good example to show you that this really works with motion graphics templates. Yeah? So I've rigged this here already with the essential graphics panel. And now what we can do is we can say here, so what are you? And here waiting for maybe let's also insert a line break and here let's say pins and boxes and now we can adjust our height as needed and now everything updates you can see the line height has adjusted to fit the new content and the animation looks nice so um, this is a great benefit and uh, probably main application for this great tool um, that you can use these automatic layouts also f in the essential graphics panel and if you export it as a motion graphics template uh, right inside Premiere Pro. So how did we set up this particular example? Here I've got a version of it with just these three texts and I just animate them in from somewhere at the side and here they reach their final location and nothing happened here really except these few keyframes and now we need some uh, pins. So I want to have some pin at the bottom of this layer because when this layer grows, then these two should move down. Yeah? So I shift click on pins and say, I would like to have some pin at the bottom right. And to this one, I want to parent this layer. So I parent it to this uh, pin that I oops, currently cannot see because I've shied my layers and pins are shy. This is layer number one. Yeah, this is, this is our pin. So this, is, this will be parented to this pin. And now we do the same with uh, this layer. So maybe to see it a bit better, we can also go to the effect controls of the pin and go to its appearance and make it a bit smaller. Like this, this is just appearance, just how it's looking like. It's not affecting the functionality at all. Now we go to the this and also in pins and boxes, shift click on pins and say for the this, we want to have a pin at the bottom left corner because the tool should always be like connected to the bottom left of, of this text. If this text is growing, this should move down. And if this text is going to the right, it should not move with it to the right. Therefore, we pick the left bottom corner. Okay, we can also make this pin a bit smaller. And now we take the tool layer, which is this layer here, and we want to parent it to this pin, which is layer number three. So we take the tool and parent it to layer number three. So what we have so far now is, is if, we, if we change this text here, these two move accordingly because this one is parented to this pin and this is parented to this pin. And if I change this text, the tool also moves down as needed. So parent term relationship is great. Now we want a box ar around something because uh, we want a line and lines are always based on boxes. Um, how do we create a box around this? The problem is the line should always be at the center. So if we make a box that say contains everything, yeah, then it's tough to always place it here in the center because let's say if we make this text here very long or so, then, so if this text is growing, then any line on this box around the entire content would also move to the right. So it's not a good idea to make a box here around the entire content. But instead, we want to make a box around the middle here, so to speak. So if we would take these two pins, a line in the middle between those two would be right. It would just not have the right height. Yeah? And to get enough height, we need two pins here at the top of this layer and at the bottom of this layer. We select this layer and say shift click pins, please give me one for the top right. And this one here, shift click pins, give me one for the bottom right. Now, what we need at minimum is this pin, this pin, and this pin. And if we now create a box around those, we have a box that is here. And now in the effect controls, instead of a box, we want to render a vertical line. Now we've got our line here, great. Let's maybe make it a tiny bit bigger. And now we want it to be a bit higher than this text and this text here. So we give it a little bit of a margin at the top and also a little bit of margin at the bottom. Now, a problem we have is that those pins are currently moving with our texts. And this is something they definitely should not. Uh, maybe this looks interesting to you, but I would rather uh, not like to have it this way. So we select all layers and say, this is a point in time where everything is in the final location. So with all layers selected, we just click on this thing to turn our pins into pins that only stay at this point in time. Yeah. And now when our texts animate, the line and our pins stay nicely in place. We hide our pins 
And the only thing that is now left is that we need some mats. And these mats are in this case rather simple because they are entirely static. So we can simply make a new solid, which is composite, call it mat, uh, lower its opacity for a second and move it over here such that it's exactly at this side of the line. This is a mat for the this layer, yeah, because this is the one that arrives here at this side. So we move it over this and say this track mat alpha mat. And of course we need to raise the opacity again to 100%. And now we duplicate our mat, move it over by, make it visible for a second, move it over here like this. So we go to by, say mat is alpha inverted. No, it's, it shows, it's accidentally still alpha, but it should have had no mat before anyway. So we set it to alpha mat and turn the visibility of the mat off. And you can see now the bar is clipped nicely as it should. And exactly the same layer, we can just duplicate it, we can move it above the tool layer and also set the track mat of the tool layer to alpha mat. And now all three are trimmed as needed. Now let's create our central graphics panel here. So we say our master is, is sample for before a comp here. And we say this is a test. And now we want to change those texts in the essential graphics panel. So we reveal the source texts of by text source text. We drag the source text here. Then also for the this text, we drag the source text here. And for the tool, we drag the source text here. So we can now change these three texts directly here or as a motion graphics template. And now as a last control, we want to control the height of this entire, so the location of this entire thing. And I mean, if we move this here, everything else is parented to it. Yeah? So everything else moves with it um, at the pin time. But you can see this, this layer is keyframed, so we really don't want to expose this keyframed position uh, here in our panel. So we need to parent the by to something. Just say we make a new null object and call this master position or something like this and parent the by to it. Now we've got this master null here accidentally below our mat, also between the by and our mat layer, which makes a null becomes a mat, which we don't want. So we move this on top. Let's actually move this to the top of the comp. And now everything is as it should be. And again, if we change the text here, everything updates, line size updates, everything as we want. So this is how you create these dynamic layouts and use them with your central graphics panel or also export them as a motion graphics template to directly use them in Premiere Pro.